Hi everyone, I am Pastor Rick and welcome to Consider This. In case you're wondering why we call it Consider This, you know, I, when I teach Bible study, I like to tell people that I'm not, I don't have the exclusive rights on truth. I'm giving you my opinion. There are things that work in my life and I just tell you how I interpret the Bible. And as it says in James, he said, consider it a joy. So I'm just saying, when I teach you something, I just want you to consider this. You know, Bible study is kind of like a, a big buffet of food. When you go to the Golden Corral, you don't eat everything, but you do, you pick and look at things and decide what you want. Well, the same way with Bible study. You'll notice that my wife isn't here tonight, Pastor Cheryl. She's taking the night off. She's got tons of paperwork, so it'll just be me tonight. But here's the first slide, and here's what we're going to be doing on, on this edition of Consider This. Tonight's teaching is Living on a Prayer. You remember that Bon Jovi song? Well, this is part three, How to Pray about your problems. Let's just say a little prayer right now before we even start this study. Heavenly Father, I know that people are busy in their work schedule. I would just pray right now that you remove anything that is not of you from them. Lord, we'd remove any pride. We'd ask you to crush that pride. Lord, if there's any anger out there, we'd, we'd, Lord, we'd ask that you give them a spirit of forgiveness wherever this hurt them. We'd ask you, Lord, to remove any fear, any guilt, and replace it with faith and grace and open our hearts and open our minds and give us something fresh and new. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen. I wrote a new song, and I'm not going to be doing it tonight, but I played it the other night in, in our normal Bible study. Here's the name of the song. It's coming up on the screen right now. It's called, It's a Jungle Out There. Do you ever feel that? I feel it. I feel it's a jungle out there sometimes. I mean, you, you know, you just, once you come into Christ, and I believe the opposite of Christ is craziness. I, I don't believe in being a Christian. I think that's sort of a label. I believe you can be in Christ, which is the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy, or you can be in craziness. And even though that you're Christian, sometimes things can get crazy. But Paul talks to us about being a witness. Well, I'm going to talk to you tonight a little bit about looking at things a little bit differently. You know, Paul said to be in the world, but not of the world. When you witness an accident, you're not in the accident. You're just looking at the accident. Well, I believe that it's a jungle out there. And what we want to be able to do is be a witness for Jesus. We're witnessing the craziness out there, but we're not part of the craziness. So, you know, when you're in a jungle, you want to survive. And this is how I've always thought this. I thought that survival, you need two things. Number one, you need a map. But you know, if you have a map and you don't have a compass, that map will make no sense. Well, I believe that the Bible is our map. But once you know where true north is, which you only can find out with a compass, then you will really understand your map. And I believe that that's what the compass is. The compass is the voice of God. We need the secrets of survival. Now, you know, many, some people believe that life is going to go on forever. There are other people that firmly believe that we're in the end times. And I sincerely believe that one of the most important things that you're going to have to do in the end times, if we are in the end times, if everything collapses, if everything falls apart, you're not going to have a road map. You're not going to be able to go to work like you normally go to work if all these things come down as they say they are. But what's going to make you, the keys to survival is going to be your ability to pray, to hear God's voice, and to obey that voice. Jesus talked about, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Let's look at three things that are going to be the secret to survival, even if it, things don't fall apart, but secrets to survival today. Number one, here's the first slide. It's the key to witnessing miracles. It's called prayer. You know, most people don't realize that, you know, these healing evangelists that walk out on the platform, most of them have been in prayer three, four, five, six hours before they walk out there. You just can't walk up. You know, it's people sometimes just try to pray for people without spending time alone with God. If you want to witness, you know, miracles, then you've got to build a relationship with Jesus Christ and spend time alone with him and praying and fasting and doing these things because then you'll see number one, which is you witness miracles. Here's number two. Praying is the key to knowing God's will. What is God's will for your life? I'll give you some easy ways to look at it. God is a God of peace and a God of joy. Are you working the job that God wants you to work? It's very simple. Are you enjoying it? The Bible says you can either serve God or serve money. Many people go to work every single day because they're just trying to pay the bills. They're not living in the kingdom. God's will is that you enjoy the work. The Bible says, consider the lilies of the field, they don't work. When I first read that, I thought, is God telling me not to work? No, I'll tell you what. I love, enjoy 
teaching the Bible. I enjoy ministering to people. I enjoy leading worship. The things that I do in my life, I enjoy recording. I enjoy writing. I'm doing the things that I enjoy in life. That is God's will. Well, through prayer, you will find God's will in your life. And where does God want me to live? And where does God want me to act? And how does God want me? What does God want me to do? Well, you'll find that out through prayer and through obeying that prayer. And number three is this. Prayer is the key to having great faith. You know, I, one of the teachings that I gave was, you know, does, does prayer gave, change God or does prayer change me? And the answer is yes. I will tell you, when we ran the church, if I didn't pray about people in the church, I'd get upset. But if I sat there and spent an hour going through every name of every person that was in the church and I prayed for those people, the next day when I saw them, I, was, I just saw them in a whole different light. You know, my faith had built up about those people. So remember, you know, I'll just review this real quickly. You want to see witness miracles and healings in your life? The answer is prayer. If you want to know God's will in your life, the answer is prayer. And if you want to have great faith in your life, the answer is prayer. In fact, the Bible talks to us about prayer. Let's take a look at this Bible verse, Romans 10, 17, and what it says about faith. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why I'm so glad that you're listening right now. You know, People will talk, and fear also comes by hearing. You know, you watch the news, and this is falling apart, and the crisis over in Afghanistan and Iran. It creates fear. And, you know, many commercials are about fear. What would you do if you died tomorrow? You know, it creates a fear in you. Do you have the insurance that you need? It creates a fear in you. What if somebody in your family dies? Do you have the, you know, the, the, the resources? Do you have enough money to retire? These messages are so fear-based. Yet the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. That's why I'm glad you're watching us tonight or today or whatever time you're watching this is because I do everything I can to teach you the Word of God and to build your faith. Because here's my acronym. I have two acronyms for faith. This is what faith is, you know, when you're praying and everything. Take a look at this slide here. It's faith is F-A-I-T-H. It's finding assurance in the heart. I love that one. Or here's another one. F-A-I-T-H is finding all I think happens. Here's a good way of reminding you what faith is. What's the difference between faith and fear? They're both your imagination. Faith is, is having your, uh, using your imagination to believe what is going to happen. Fear is the same thing. What is fear? Fear is those times, what if? What if we run out of money? What if we run out of food? What if we get, out, we get sick? sick? How many times do you ever sit there and say to yourself, what, what would happen if I just inherited $10,000? That picture, that never comes to your mind. What would happen if everything works out? Well, the point of it is, is that that's the good news. When you serve Christ, you remove your fear and you substitute fear with faith. And what happens with faith? Faith will create joy in your life. That's the kingdom of God. It's peace and joy. You will never have joy in your life if you live in fear. And so many people are afraid of this and afraid of that. And so just remember this little pattern. You know, fear, you replace your fear with faith, and faith will produce joy. Because if I said to you, what if you knew everything was going to be all right for the rest of your life? Would you have joy? Well, that's the truth. That'll set you free. It will be. Now, how about, you know, uh, when it comes to the other side of things? You can't live your life in guilt. You replace your guilt with grace. And what comes out of grace is peace. So now you know that through grace and faith, you have your peace and you have your joy. Let's take a look at an incredibly strong verse on how to have your prayer answers and how to live in peace and joy. Take a look at John 15, verses 5 through 9. Jesus is saying this. This is the verse that is talking about dependence on God and devotion to God. I think I've read this on every single, on all three sermons that I have done on living on a prayer. Here it is in John 15. It says, I am the vine. Think about it. Picture this in your mind. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Now, fruit is prosperity in your life, the fruits of the Spirit, a love, goodness, and joy. Those are all, when, when you're bearing fruit, things are going well. The Bible says this, for without me, this is Jesus talking. Remember, he's without me, without, without the way, without the truth, without the life, you can do nothing. The Bible says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, you labor in vain. Maybe some things are going well for you. But unless Jesus has directed you to do this, things will fall apart. The Bible says this, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out, he is cast as a branch and is withered. 
and then gathered them up and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But here's this promise. Remember, I've always said this. If you want to get the promises of God, then you understand that there are premises. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. It's not wonderful knowing, you know, you're at the, thank you, Liv, you're at the end of, uh, you're at the end of your rope, you know. You go to the doctors and, and you sit there and you say, the doctor just said, well, we say this around here a lot, whose report shall you believe? There's a man who is a good friend of mine here that 12 years ago was told he had cancer. He had very little time. The doctor told him to put his, his life in order. It's 12 years later and he hasn't died from cancer. He's doing better and better every day. I am my father-in-law who lived to be 94, I believe or so, was told, I think when he was about 50 years old, that he was going to die. But he believed God's report. The Bible says, by your stripes we are healed. Maybe you're watching tonight and you've got a bad report. And Well, I just want to remind you, put up this next slide, Liv, that the Bible is filled with 7,000 plus promises. That's amazing. Ask yourself, how many of these promises am I living by? Am I living what Jesus said in John 10.10? 10? I'm coming to give you life and life abundant. you know how many people you know, listen to teachings on the Bible and they think that Bible is about rules and regulations? Don't smoke, excuse me, don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang around people who do. That's not what it is. You know, when you look at John 10.10 10 and John 10.11, John 10.11 says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He steals your joy. He steals your health. He steals your money. You know, he's out there to get you, have your marriage fall apart, things to go bad. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life abundant. He wants your life to be wonderful. And that's what it is to be a Christian. doesn't mean we don't go through tough times. We're real people with real problems, but we've got some real answers. Now, tonight we're going to talk about praying for your problems, how we do that. Now, I'm going to t I did this teaching a little bit earlier on how God speaks to us, but I'm going to take it at a fork where I want you to understand that when these other parts that I'm talking about, that God speaks to us in these two ways. And this is very, very important for you to learn. Here's number one. God speaks this way. Here's the slide coming up. God speaks universally, which is called logos. Okay, let me, let me explain to you what this means. That everybody knows that the Bible says love is patient, love is kind, and he's teaching that for everyone. But there is another way that God speaks, and this is why, you know, God was speaking to the church of Corinth, and he had the woman sitting on one side, he had the men sitting on another. Well, there were things. Now, what has happened is God was speaking directly to those people and telling the Apostle Paul, how they needed to solve their problems. So now, 2,000 years later, God, people are still looking at those scriptures and saying, we need, we, we, we need to cover our heads, and we need to have the woman sit, and the woman needed to... No, no, no. You've got to understand that God speaks through logos, which is universally, but take a look at the second one. God speaks through, and this is so important, personally, rhema. Logos and rhema. Logos is universally, personally is to you. Now, let me explain this to you. Okay. The Bible says that Peter got out of the boat and he walked on water. Okay, Well, now people are reading that verse and trying to walk on water. No, that's a logos. You're reading the logos. Peter got out of the boat and he walked on water. But what people are missing in that verse is that Jesus was giving him a rhema to walk out of that boat. He didn't tell any other disciples. So you may read a verse, and the important thing is, is when you're praying to God, you read a verse and have God speak directly to you. What is God telling you about that verse? What is God revealing to you about that verse? This rhema. There's a Bible school called Rhema Bible School where they teach people how to look at the scriptures and have God speak to them. Now, I've done this teaching before and I'm going to look at this, but I'm going to want you to look at it differently. You know, hearing God comes through, you know, six ways. Now, take a look at this one. Number one is this one. Hearing from God, you've heard me teach this before, comes from the Bible. But here's what I want you to know when you're looking at that slide, that he's speaking through the Bible, but he's speaking universally, which is called logos, and he's also speaking to you personally, which is called rhema. Let's go back to the screen here. We'll go back to him. To understand, this is why it's so important for you to get a personal revelation. What is God telling you on that verse? You're reading a verse and it said, uh, I don't know, maybe it's something about a woman's hair should be covered. You're reading that verse. That is a Logos verse that the woman needed to cover their hair that was to those ladies to that time. 
Is God telling you to do that right now? See, we don't have enough rhema. What's happening is people say, what's in the Bible? I need to do it. Yeah, but is it really what God is telling you? So that's why it's important to when you read your Bible, to sit there with a notebook or a journal and read a verse and what is God telling you personally about that verse? So that's why sometimes we get in other people's business and, and because we are taking the logos and not looking at a person and saying, what is your rhema? You'll often hear me say this if you're around here. What is your path of healing? And what do I mean by that? The Bible says that people were sick and they laid hands on them. That doesn't necessarily mean that I need to go lay hands on that person right now. I need to go to that person and say, what is God telling you about your healing? Do you need, do you need to go to a doctor? Do you need chemotherapy? Uh, do you need to take some medication? Do you need to take time off? Do you need for me to, there's all these options. Do you need for me to pray for you? That is the rhema that I'm looking for for people's lives. The problem is, is that, you know, if you're arrogant, you're like, let me pray for you. You know what's so sad about that? If, if they're not getting a rhema about being prayed for, you look at the Bible and people are coming up to Jesus and saying, please pray for me. Well, they got a revelation from God that they needed Jesus to pray for them. A lot of times people are just out of their own egos and wanting to pray for people and they pray for people. What, you feel better? And people are like, no. It isn't that you don't have the gift of healing. But, you know, that person may have not have received a revelation that you're the one who needs to be prayed for. I know that when I was doing an altar call, were in the church, if someone came up to me specifically and said, the Lord just told me, you, Pastor Ray, to come up and pray for me, 100% of the time when I ever heard that, that person would become healed. It's so important that people understand the difference between logos, which is the written word of God, and rhema, which is the revelation from God. Here's a second way you've heard me teach on this, okay? Second thing is an anointed teacher. Now, here's this. When you're hearing somebody teach, okay, be so careful because it's this. You hear me do this, sign of the cross, okay? Pride, anger, fear, and guilt. You know, is what they're telling me, um, you know, is that person being prideful in what they're telling me? Is it producing anger in me? Is it producing fear in me? Is it promote, producing guilt in me? Well, then that's probably not from God. Well, the point of it is, is what they're teaching. Is it producing faith in me? Am I receiving the message with grace? Am I listening to that message? And am I being convicted? Now, convicted does not mean to be made feel guilty. It's convinced. You know, I'm listening to that guy and he's convinced me. I need to change my life. I need to do this. I need to give up smoking. I need to go on a diet. It's not just, you know, the Bible says, what is God telling you? If God gave you a revelation of everything that needs to be changed, in five minutes, you'd, you'd go crazy. You'd be so overwhelmed. God says, this is what you need to work on. He gives you a, a, a rhema at a certain time. That's why the Bible says, judge no one according to their faith. So that's why it's so dangerous to try to fix people and try to control them. Well, you know, the Bible says, yeah, but teach them about rhema. What is God telling you to do? We don't know where people are at. Just because Peter walked out of the boat and walked on water doesn't mean you need to go try that tomorrow. You'll probably drown. So when you're listening to anointed teachers, ask God, God, is this message for me? Is this something you want me to do? And he'll tell you. He'll help you. Here's the third way. Gifted family and friends, okay? Now, I want you to really understand this. I've taught this again, but I cannot you know, tell this enough to you. Okay, when you're hearing this, what happens is a lot of times people will try to intimidate you. People will try to interrogate you or isolate you, pull, pull you away. And, and you think that they're gifted. You know, the truth is going to set you free. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. You know, when you're around somebody who's godly and gifted, they'll, they give you freedom. They give you choices. You listen to somebody come up, the Lord is telling me. Uh, when somebody comes up to me and says that, I'm not sure that's from God. When somebody comes up to me and says, you know, Pastor Rick, I'm not sure this is from God, but if, if, this, if you receive this and this means something to you, good. If it's not, just please throw it away. That's humility. You know, gifted family and friends are the type of people that say, you know, I don't want to get in your business, but have you thought of? But, you know, if you don't, it's a, but people that aren't gifted are control freaks. You need to do this. That's like this logos rather than this rhema. You know, people change when God reveals something to them. And that's why it's so important to remove people's fear, to remove their guilt, their pride, and their anger. I was with somebody the other day and said, you're being prideful. I looked at the person and said, I thought to myself, you're being prideful in telling them. 
The Bible says you who judge do the same thing. You spot it, you got it. You see, we need, if we're going to correct people, we've got to do it in a loving way. We've got to make the problem easy to correct. We want to want people to want to change because God is revealing it. Right now, I'm giving my logos to you, and you need to be listening to God, what God is saying to you, because there's two messages. There's a rhema or revelation going on for you right now that's, that's going on in your head. So be careful. When you read the Bible, look for the fresh revelation. The, the, when, you're, when you're listening to anointed teaching teachers, make sure that is for you. You know, at times, I know there's somebody out there listening. Well, there may be 5,000 people out there listening to the same message, but is that message for you? Receive it without pride. Receive it with humility and ask God, is that for you? Same with family and friends. People want to control you, but ask. Ask the Lord. Lord, you know, the great counsel and the multitude of many. Listen to what all the people have to say. Best thing you can always say to is good point, good point, good point, and then go find God and let him give you the revelation of what you need to do. Fourth way that people hear from God, ideas and impressions. Now, I never discussed this, but I want to really cover this. The Bible talks so much about dreams. You know, I want to tell you this, that... Uh, we had a speaker over here who talked about one of the worst, uh, uh, what do you call it, fault lines is right by the Great Lakes, which would separate America right in half. And it's kind of funny that I'm on now on this side of the, uh, on the western side of, of the fault line. And for years, I've always had this dream of my wife and I standing, and there was a giant river running. And you could tell it was fresh, that it had just happened. I mean, the river looked like about two miles wide and stuff. And that's what they claim if that fault line went down, that America would just split. And they claim that the Great Lakes would go right down into the ocean. Well, I remember looking at my wife in the dream. I've had this dream numerous times where I said to her, I said, well, geez, I don't think we're going to see family and friends for a long time because we're on the other side now. And until they build bridges or we fly home or whatever, I never understood what that dream was about. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I just find it peculiar that I kept having that dream. Well, God will speak to you in dreams. The Bible talks so much about people that have dreams and visions in their sleep. And there are people out there that are real professional Christian people that are good at interpreting dreams and stuff like that. But God will talk to you. God will talk to you in impressions and ideas. You've heard me say this before. You know, if I was to look at this clock right here, and I would tell you this before, that this clock was created twice. It was created once in a person's mind, and then it became a reality. Well, God will give you impressions. Uh, you know, anybody who's a vision, visionary, Pastor Jim here, is a great visionary. He sees things before he builds it. Well, you know, when I sat in this room and this room was all, was all there was nothing on the walls, I just sat here and just kind of closed my eyes and had God give me a vision of what it needed to look like. And I knew we had curtains, we had newspapers for the, the set that we used for the Good News Show. God gave me these ideas and impressions and didn't cost us any money to fix the room. But, you know, just because... I have used newspaper to put up the walls in this room. That would be my logos. My rhema, grab this, my rhema becomes your logos. My rhema is not necessarily your rhema. When I have a rhema, it becomes your logos, and then you ask God. Because then we'll have all these people decorating their homes and newspapers because that's what Pastor Rick did. You know, there's a guy by the name of Pastor Rick Warren, and when Rick Warren first started his church, he wanted to blend in with the people of Florida, so he wore no socks and he wore these little flowered shirts. Well, people came from New York to listen to Rick's message, and they thought the key to building the church was wearing the shirts that he was wearing and wearing no socks. Well, the comedy was that attire worked very appropriately for California, but it wasn't the attire needed in New York City We'll see Rick's revelation, Rick's rhema, was not necessarily everybody's logos. So you've got to find what God wants to do in your life. And the last, uh, number five is this one. God speaks through you through suffering. Now, okay, this is so important that you understand this, okay? You may read a story in the Bible, logos. God spoke to Job because he had boils. He get, you know, he ought to eat his boils and Job learned through suffering. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean because you got a boil that God is punishing you and this is how God is talking to you. Ask God, God, have you given me this boil? Do you understand that? I you, you hope you're grasping this. You know, just because you've seen this, if your life is going tough, God is not punishing you and trying to create you to be a Job just because you've read the logos of Job's suffering. So understand that God sometimes allows suffering 
as a way to wake us up. And I mean, you know, if I hadn't had that heart condition, I'd still be running the church. And that two weeks I spent, that suffering of two weeks in the church changed my life. And I spent a lot more time developing a television ministry, I mean, a webcast ministry. So through that suffering, God used it and, 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 and gave me a fresh revelation that I couldn't continue at my age running the church I'm working, I'm running. And last but not least, number six, God works through silence. Now, I will tell you this. That's probably the one that, whether you think of it logos-wise or you think about rhema-wise, Silence, when God is not speaking, I don't care if it's logos or rhema, it's simply this. I know one thing he's saying. Trust me. Trust me. Now sometimes, look at this next slide here. I'm going to keep this up. Sometimes you just got to be still. You know, look at the word busyness. It means, business means busyness. Many people out there are in business. They're in busyness. You're so busy. But I will tell you this. When you get still, you'll hear his voice. Thank you, Liv. There's a lady here who's a very good friend of mine, and uh, she's been our, our friend widow, and she's been on the show a couple times, and you know she's been listening to the things I've been teaching, and she's finally hearing from God. And in the process, she's been told you know, that she's going to be selling her places, and she's going to be moved back with her family. And I'm so honored that she's obeying God. I'm going to miss her, and I hate to see her go. She's become a good friend. But, you know, I want people to obey God. Now, take a look at this, this little sign here, this next slide. It says, I have a testimony. Please, if you're listening to God and God is telling you something, please send us an email. Write to us. Let me know what God is doing in your life. You know, pastors are thrilled. All pastors burn out when they don't feel like they're making a difference. But when we find out that I'm helping you to learn how to trust God and your life will change. That means more to me than, than, than anything in my life other than my family and my relationship with God to knowing that your life is changing. I wear this hat all, a lot, better life. My goal is that your life becomes better and it becomes better because you're listening to God. We're going to end this program here today and I hope this has helped you understanding the difference between Logos and Rhema. But take a look at this, uh, these, my, my favorite prayers and I know I've done this before, but I want you to, as you read this, this is Logos on the screen. But what revelation, what rhema is God telling you as I read these prayers? What is he revealing to you? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Liv. So when you read that prayer right there, you know, all of a sudden you read daily bread. That doesn't mean that you run to the supermarket and you start, uh, your whole diet consists of bread. Heck, you may be on a low-carb diet and need to get away from bread. But the point of it is, is you read something. Maybe you read that prayer and it's like, Oh, geez, I'm asking God to forgive me. I need to forgive others. Oh, I, I, I read that prayer, and what God revealed to me is that it's not about me leaving this earth and going to heaven. It's about bringing heaven down to earth and colonizing the earth. Take a look at this prayer and see if this ministers to you. This is from Proverbs 30. Oh, God, I beg two favors from you. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. Now, you know, you may be reading that prayer and be on the edge of making a million dollars. Oh, I can't do that because that prayer. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying read that prayer, but that's logos. Maybe God wants you to finish that million dollar deal. I don't know. What's he telling you to do? Because maybe he's going to need, you're going to need that money to donate to somebody, to some great ministry. I don't know. Donate to our ministry. But get your rhema when you read this. Now take a look at this prayer and see if you can get some rhema. This is from St. Augustine. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's abuse, let me bring love. Where there's hurt, let me bring forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me bring faith. Where there's despair, let me bring hope. Where there's darkness, let me bring light. 
Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Maybe when you read that, you got a revelation. I have somebody at work that's filled with despair. Tomorrow morning when I got to go in there, I'm going to bring them hope. When you read that whole prayer and you look for that rhema, there's something specific that God is telling you to do. Take a look at this next prayer here. It's all part of my third favorite prayer. It says, Dear God, help me that I focus not so much on being comforted, but that I may comfort others. Not to be understood but that i may understand others not that i am loved but that i love others for it is in the giving we receive it is in the forgiving that we are forgiven it is in the dying to self that we are born into a meaningful life in jesus name we pray you know you read a prayer like that and what revelation what one line god is revealing to you and last but not least we won't go deep on this one but this is really simple i love this prayer before we eat Dear God, bless the food before us, bless the family beside us, bless the friendships between us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I just love that. It's so simple and sweet. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight about the teaching about how to pray for your own problems. Go to the scriptures and look for them. Look for a specific answer. Remember, the scriptures are universally, it's called logos, but personally it's called a rhema. When you read your Bible, you ask, Lord, what is it? that you want me to specifically do. Next week, here's our teaching. Please don't miss this one. Part four, how to pray for power. This teaching I did last week, it was probably one of the best teachings I've ever done. I'm not saying this from a pride sense, but people's lives were changed in our Bible study. Make sure you bring a friend. Don't do this one alone. This is probably my favorite teaching of all time. I mean, Lord, do I teach him this? No, you need to do the basics first. I'm so excited that by next week I'll be able to you know, release that teaching to you. It's, you're going to find out the, how to pray when you pray for an hour instead of praying for the president and start going crazy. I'm going to show you this teaching that correlates itself with the teachings of the tabernacle. It'll be mind-boggling. Your life will be changed. Well, thank you. I'm Pastor Rick. Thank you for joining us on the... On the I'm glad I don't speak for a living. On this edition of Consider This, we'll see you Sunday with a good news show. God bless. Bye-bye now.